this team is going to be successful, we're going to need a lot from Mozzie controlling the middle. When you control the middle of the field, you control the field. And he was out there before anyone else working out. Mozzie, Mozzie, I know you're tired, man. But like, quick question for you. Can I ask a quick question? Man, with you out there early, you were the first man on the field. Working with the handwork. How do you like working with your new defensive line coach? That's it? All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs>Well, good Monday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is Monday. It is a new week, and I've been away from the man cave so long. I'm not sure how many days it is until the kickoff of the NFL season, but it's getting close. It's getting really, really close, and I've had an incredible time shout out to all of the wonderful fans that came up and you know grabbed a picture and stuff tag me if you post it on facebook or twitter and things like that so i can definitely check it out and i'll be sharing ones that i have uh, of you guys as well and we are now having our first preseason game in the books. I wanted to give a few notes and things and observations that I had. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the time to do any film breakdown because I definitely want to give you some great stuff on Mozzie Smith and do the film breakdown. Uh, you'll see lots of guys. I know CFO is already taking care of doing some, and everybody's going to. By the time I get to it, it'll be old hash. But I can at least give you the perspective of understanding the position, having played it, um, maybe a little bit more than others. And if not, maybe you can just enjoy hearing me talk for a bit. But um, the Cowboys, we saw some good things yesterday. Now, before everybody gets all crazy and thinks that the, the preseason game is an indication of how the team will do, I've seen the Detroit Lions go 4-0 in preseason and lose every game during the regular season. And the Cowboys typically are not a team that scores a whole lot of points in preseason and wins preseason games. I know the trolls out there are going to say, oh, you're just trying to make excuses. You're just making excuses. Okay, whatever. You, you do you, bro. You do you. But I got to say, I was surprised when the Cowboys lined up with Brandon Albury for a 65-yard field goal. 65 yards. He had the leg, but it was just a little bit to the right. That guy... It's amazing because the first kick he had in the NFL was a missed field goal, and I'm not sure he's missed since. It is amazing because I think about two years ago when I was here at training camp and watching the three kickers we had in there trying out for the roster and literally, literally them being like four out of ten kicks. It was just atrocious. Now, we don't even think about it, and if it's a 60-yard field goal, you feel actually pretty good that he has a chance on there. So he was four out of five on attempts, but again, one attempt was 65 freaking yards. He was butter, as always. Um, it's almost comical to me how um, Dak Prescott haters will literally kill Dak. Okay, let's say the ball is right here. Dak Prescott's ball placement is terrible. He's terrible. He sucks. I was looking at some of the passes from Trey, and I'm not trying to be here cynical about Trey Lance, but those, some of those passes were late, and they were behind, and they were high. The ball placement, he needs a lot of work on it. He is not ready to be the starting quarterback. I think we can end this notion right now. He's not ready at the moment to be the backup quarterback. However, I will say this, the extra element of his legs has been, it is something that they may want to consider because of our lack of running backs and things. I'm not saying convert him to a running back, but you could develop a package for Trey Lance that will hopefully put defenses on notice that this could be a running play and you end up doing a bootleg and boom, quick hitters or something. That it, it's possible to use his elements and things. But he has a long ways to go. And, you know, we were in the end zone 
uh, corner of the end zone over there. Perfect shot, and I actually have it on my. Uh, I'm, I'm actually um, editing it now. The whole field. You see the whole field. It was great play design. One receiver went in. The other receiver lined up here. Went out. He literally had five yards. Five yards. And you will see it on the shot I have. And it's unbelievable how open he is. Now, granted, he's throwing diagonally across the field. So you got to put a little bit of air and drop it into the bread basket there. Unfortunately, it just sailed right on out of bounds. The guy, that, that should have been a touchdown. And when you get four takeaways, when you get four takeaways in a game, you got to get more than four field goals. Let's just be clear here. You have got to take care of those opportunities and get touchdowns. But again, this was a game where it's a preseason game. You're not game planning. You don't have all of your top weapons and things like that. You're just basically doing vanilla offenses and things like that. So not to kill them, just saying the first preseason game, you got to do better than that come the next one on Saturday. So, you know, some good. He definitely picked up a lot of yardage, but we averaged 4.6 yards per pass. Um, for all those that were saying, <laughs> Ray Ray, Ray Ray, that Dak's got to push it down the field. Bro, 4.6 is abysmal. Now, again, this is preseason, so don't think that everything that happened in preseason is indicative of what's going to happen in the season. You can hope that it translates. One thing that we know about Dan Quinn and his defense was we got a lot of takeaways. Yesterday, now, was it the defense was in great positions and made plays and that they are just playmakers? Or was it that the Rams quarterbacks were just ass-ass? It was probably a bit of both. And here's the thing is turnovers are key you know a lot of people you know would, will bust on Jerron Bland and uh, Diggs because they say yeah they get the interceptions and stuff but you know they get beat from time to time well I tell you what interceptions and takeaways are key that is straight butter because here's the thing about those those can be as much as a 14 point swing Team's driving down there. They're about to score seven points. You get the ball, and you go the other way. It could be 14 points different had you not gotten it. And for me, I will take those turnovers, and I am excited as can be about seeing us getting those turnovers. Of course, you guys know my pet player, Mozzie Smith. Mozzie Smith, a much maligned Mozzie Smith, is going to make a lot of you guys eat crow because I told you, the way he has changed his body, the way he is learning to move with it, and he is moving, they're teaching him to get upfield. Now, so you have to understand that he is still learning. He is young. He is really young. What he did in college was basically working on the line, one technique over the center, every play, hold the line, hold the line. Now they're teaching him, um, and now he's more in the A gap. Okay, he's got the cock stance towards the center and stuff. And it's taking care of that gap right there. That's his spot and taking on those double teams and being able to hold the line. But not only that, they're teaching him to get upfield. In fact, I dare say if Dan Quinn saw the film of him yesterday, seeing him shed the block and make the tackle on the screen, you see, typically the fat guys, us fat guys, you know, we see the screen, we're, we're way behind, okay? We just pile on at the end, okay? But for him to recognize the screen, get rid of the guy, and get over there and be part of the tackle is huge. And even in pass rushing, you're seeing him now using what I was talking about where he's getting his hands on the guy and he's doing that quick swim. So you can't do a full swim because you're exposing too much of your body. But they've got this real quick swim that literally gets your hand over the guy's shoulder pads and gets his hands off of you and gets you upfield. So we're looking much, much better there. And hey, considering that Marquise Bell played, played pretty good as a linebacker, just undersized, he needs to be a safety. He needs to be a safety because you saw him out there getting another pick, and that's where he needs to be. And now we actually have linebackers, so he won't have to play safety. All these things were incredible. And Tyler Guyton, um, you saw some flashes early on with him. 
of being a road grader, literally in pass blocking, driving a guy down the line of scrimmage. Now, again, I preface it all of this stuff to say, remember, we're talking about playing against backups. Not starters. We're talking about playing against backups. It's a lot different when you end up having, you know, premier players out there that you're playing against as opposed to guys that might not make a roster. But we saw some good things, some positive things, and things for the Cowboys to build on. Now, one of the things that we need to build on is getting C.D. Lamb back. Um, Before we get out of here, let's hear what they have to say on ESPN this morning. You know they're going to trash the Cowboys. Rushed in on a nice 43-yard play. Yeah, Greeny, Cooper Rush has always played well when given the opportunity. Under center drop back, throws a beautiful goal ball down the left sideline. Really good adjustment by that wide receiver to come back. And- Let's fast forward because we don't want, can't show these highlights. Okay. To do with what took place on the field, the owner, Jerry Jones, yesterday walking back those comments he made last week about there not being a sense of urgency to get a deal done with C.D. Lamb. Those comments did not sit well with the wide receiver. Here's what Jerry said. I think I got in trouble a little the other day when I said, uh, uh, look, uh, we're not urgent about C.D. Well, no one appreciates C.D. being on the field any more than I do. Now, I understand completely the angst that's happening when you are anxious about and someone says anything about whether you're missed or not. Well, C.D., you're missed. Okay, but you're not missed out here competing, and it doesn't put any pressure any place on us. It's like you're okay. not out here so, competing. <laughs> Dan Graziano, do you have a Jerry English, English Jerry yeah. dictionary? Can yeah. you explain that one? Well, we said last week, right, they asked him, is there a sense of urgency? He's going to say no because he's negotiating, and it doesn't help his negotiating position to say yes. But obviously he gets back and sees the reaction, like, uh, you know what, I should probably have said something different in the moment. His points are, look, we, we, we're confident we'll get it done. In the meantime, we've had some other receivers getting opportunities in camp, and that's a good thing. We know C.D. Lamb knows the offense. We know whenever he gets here, it'll be fine. Uh, So those are the points he's trying to make. But, yeah, he felt like he had to go out and say that because, obviously, uh, it must have gotten back to him that the player got annoyed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, anyone who has access to Twitter X is aware that he was annoyed because C.D. Lamb reposted that cut by with the letters LOL, and then Micah Parsons retweeted that. So Mm -hmm. the players are noticing. Players and those, you know, really, what, what the funny thing was, yeah. first thing that jumped to my mind was, remember when Emma Smith held out? Yeah, yes, I do. I, I, like, that's the first thing that I started thinking with the, when this whole thing started yeah. unfolding was, because mm-hmm. CD, like, hold out until the regular season. Like, this dude has yes. a lot of leverage here. And, and that's the, that to me is, when I heard Jerry Jones made the initial comments, I'm like, bro, this is not good. Yes, for those who don't remember what D. Mm-hmm. Wood is talking about. Uh, Two generations ago, in the early tenure of Jerry Jones being the owner of the Cowboys, they won the Super Bowl, and then the following year, Emmitt Smith held out into the season. Mm -hmm. He missed the first two games of the season. They realized just how badly they needed him. They got him back. They won the Super Bowl again, and he was the MVP of the Super Bowl. So we've seen that happen. We've also seen Jerry go down to Cabo to sign a deal with Zeke Elliott. So usually when these standoffs have happened historically, the Cowboys have not come out on the top end of it. Dan Orlovsky, what is your perspective on all the CD stuff? See, Graz, you say he knows the offense and everything will be fine when he comes back. I disagree. Mm. You know, when these premier athletes miss time in training camp, usually there's something attached to the, either their performance or their health that isn't on par with the expectations. The Cowboys right. play a game in like three weeks or something like that. The, the ones that matter. This is valuable time for CD just to get into regular, like, hey, I'm ready to go football shape. No matter how much you train, this team plays the Cleveland Browns in week one. They're more than likely going to be starting a rookie left tackle going against Miles Garrett. That is going to be an un- unbelievably difficult task with CD Lamb, let alone without it. No receiver in football has more yards when a quarterback's pressured over the last two seasons than CD Lamb. You're mm-hmm. talking Cleveland week one. You're talking New Orleans week two. You're talking Baltimore week three. Talking the Giants with the new addition of Brian Burns week four. Pittsburgh week five. This gets really dicey for the Dallas Cowboys. For a team that's on the verge or the fringe, 
Dude, they better get this dude in camp, and they better get him firing on all cylinders when he comes back quickly, or this season can start downhill fast for the Cowboys. Gross, what were we talking about in the, in the, in the in, you know, in the pre-production? Oh, yeah. the Browns. About the Browns. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, the Browns thing. are absolutely yeah. loaded. Yeah. Loaded. I'm telling you, like, you better get this TD stuff straightened out yeah. ASAP, because it's not going to be pretty. And, and the point that Orlovsky makes that I, I brought up last week, how many times yes. do you see a player, especially a skill position player, come in late and the next thing you know it's a mm-hmm. hamstring. I remember it with Darrell Rivas. Sure. I yelled at oh, Tannenbaum no, the other day about it because he was the general okay. manager when it happened. The, these injuries, they just, they, 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 you can't yeah. help it. These guys want to be ready. That's and, why they've yeah. changed so much about ramp up periods and training right. camp. When he does get there, they'll bring him in slowly. Their contracts this off season, yeah. like all these deals like, that you see, we? you know, shaded in dark uh, there, including the Eagles and Dolphins paying two wide receivers this offseason each. Uh, and, and, of course, Devontae Adams and Cooper Cup got paid very recently and are much older players who've gotten more as contracts well done. Smith so the point that I'm making is Half of those like, guys. It, it, it's all there, right? Like, all these oh, deals yeah. are there. They've all been I mean, look, done. The fact that this hasn't gotten done stands out so much. Much more than, like, Ayuk in San Francisco. Right. Have, I mean, like, this is... You, we, you and I could do this deal in, in, in two minutes. Like, like we know, but the Cowboys are hung up on structure. When the big cap hits will be, when the guarantees will hit, they're telling him, "Look, we got to do Dak. We got to do Micah Parsons. Eventually, we got to put this jigsaw puzzle together." Uh, and his response, which I think is always should be the player's response, is like, "Not my job." Right. Like, <laughs> my job to manage yep. your salary cap for you. It's not. You come up with something I like, and I'll sign it. Yeah. What, what is that, uh, that that meme? And that's not a meme, but that. That thing where everyone's making fun. Give me my money. I would write that thing and then everyone like, me makes fun money. of the one person who nobody cheers for. Yep. Like, that's what's going okay, on. Okay, we're going to end that right there. No, the re- reality is, is it's not C.D. Lamb's problem on how you pay your bills. I have a certain set of skills that you need that are few and far between. It's up to you to figure out how you're going to pay for it. And so as the Joneses cry poor, when uh, they don't give any quarter to the fans and anything out there, they're not saying, you know what? Since we're paying, taking all of your money, we're giving it to the players. No, they don't do that, do they? They don't do that. Anyway, be that as it may, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, and we will see you soon. Can't wait to get back home to the man cave. And we are out. <laughs>